Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Princes of Florence. This is about as dry of a Euro as you can find, <laughs> which we all know Baird does not have a ton of those on this channel and what the heck thought that uh, I could show you all this game from a solo perspective and I didn't even have to lose a bet about the Vikings for it. <laughs> A quick shout out to WizKids Games. This is a newer version of the game and WizKids sent this uh, to myself and Mike from One Stop Co-op Shop. I'm going to be recording it here for Meet Me at the Table, but this is a review copy that we received. So I'll make sure not to provide any opinions here. I'm just going to show you how the solo game works. It is very interesting because this has a heavy auction system for this game normally. And how do you make auctions work for a solo game? Well, you'll see how it works. It's quite interesting. As always, make sure to turn on those Klingon subtitles in case I make any errors and I miss it in editing and somebody tells me. Otherwise, let's jump in. We'll do our setup and start our playthrough. Let's start by setting up the auction area. We can auction and try and receive different landscape tiles. There are lakes, fountains, and forests. We have prestige cards. We've shuffled those up. We have these reserve cards. We have jesters and builders. We also have our um, scoring or prestige points. That's what this is. I'm going to be red. I'm starting at zero. And so is the AI player will also be at zero. The game consists of seven rounds. We'll place this white marker to denote we're at round one. This number will explain what that means. But essentially, that means that when you build a work, you need to ensure it's at that level of value or higher. And so as rounds go, you won't be able to put out lower value val uh, works. We've laid out all of the different building types. There's large, medium, and small. Doesn't matter which type, though. If ever you're putting it into your principality, it's going to cost you 700 florin. We have freedom tiles here. Now, with the solo game, you're supposed to place out two per player. It's a little different when you're playing uh, the competitive version, uh, but two per player for solo. We have the, uh, these are very important, the profession cards. And we have our bonus cards. We'll now set up our player area. We're choosing red, so I have the red pawn. You'll see how that works. We start with 3,500 florin, so I have 3,500. If you're playing competitively, you'll actually have something to cover this the dollar amounts here so other players can't see. But since it's just me, I'll have it out. This is dual-sided. One's male and one's female. No difference other than that, so I chose this side. And we have our principality here. The building and landscape tiles will be placed on our principality, scoring us prestige points and also helping us with some of our works. In the solo game, you're supposed to randomize who the first player is. I have rolled a die and we're going to be the first player. The AI player will also use a player board and a principality board. Depending upon the difficulty, you give them a certain amount of florin to start with. We're giving them 1500. That's the standard. We have a D6 and we have their Automa cards. The Automa cards are split into three different groups, five through seven, three through four, and one through two. We'll shuffle each one of these individually, placing them on top of one another. So these will be the cards we see for rounds one and two. These will see three and four, and these will see five through seven. The final part of setup, we'll grab these profession cards. We're going to deal out four to ourselves. One, two, three, four. We get to choose three to keep. We'll put the other at the bottom of this deck. We'll give the AI three random cards from this deck as well. And we're going to play with a dummy player for a third player and fourth player. And they'll each also have three profession cards face down. Here we have the three profession cards for our AI player. And then our uh, third and fourth dummy player, we have them here. Here we have the four profession cards that we drew randomly. We get to choose three to keep. We'll place the other one at the bottom of the profession deck. Now, I'm not going to go through all these symbols right now, but just know that I like that these three symbols are the same here. Uh, so I'm actually thinking, and two of them need forests. So I think I'm actually going to take this one, put it at the bottom of the deck, and keep these three. So we've got a poet, we've got a choreographer, and a physicist. And with that, we're all set up and ready to go. So at the beginning of the game, we'll start with an auction phase, followed by an action phase. During the auction phase, we can auction for at least one of these different pieces, and then the AI will also grab one, and then we'll go and do actions. We can do two actions, and then the AI will do two actions, or vice versa, depending upon who's first player. After we've done those actions, we'll move to the next round. 
Do the auction followed by the action. Keep going until the end of round seven. At the end of the round seven, whoever has the most prestige points will win the game. To start the auction, we'll grab the first card from the AI deck and flip it over. What we're interested in right now is just the top section of this card. You can see that's the auction symbol. This is what's going to matter for the auction. We set our game up as a four player game. Technically, you could also set it up for a five player game. I chose the four player. Whenever there's only one symbol underneath a specific type of item that we can auction for, we're going to use the one that's there. But if there's two, you can see here for the four player, we'll do the 1d6 versus the 2 plus 1d6. The auction is a really interesting mechanic for solo play. What we get to do, we get to choose which item we want to bid on first. We can also look here to see how the AI will bid. So if I chose the Jester, we would have six plus rolling a 1d6, we'd see what the AI would bid. We then have to go 100 florin higher in order to claim it. If after we roll that die, we see that the number is quite high, let's say it was a six, so all of a sudden it was gonna be 1300 florin. I don't wanna pay that for a jester. We can pass. That does not mean that the AI will take that one. We can then just continue to go through and choose other items. We can choose, since we're playing a four game, uh, four player game, up to four different items and see what the AI uh, decides to bid on them. There's a couple different catches to this though, which makes this interesting. For example, if I chose either the profession card or any one of the three landscape uh, tiles, and I roll a one or a two on the die, because you can see those ones are just 1d6, there's no modifiers to them. This one has a six, oh, and I guess the, uh, the recruiting cards also have no modifier at four player. If I end up rolling a one or a two, then I have to take those, I don't have an option. But if I decide to try and auction out three things and choose not to take them, I, my final option, I can take for just 200 florin. The catch is that can only be for ones that do not have modifiers. So I couldn't do these other four and then come to the jester and only pay 200 because that's me cheating the system. So you'll see how this works as we play. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the jester. So I'm going to say, hey, the bid is open for the jester. Let's see what the AI is going to get for that. We'll roll up our die and it's a one. So it's only 700 florin. That's what they're bidding. I can choose to go to 800 and then get a Jester, which is super appealing. Jesters are helpful with any type of works, so I do think I'm going to choose to spend 800 florin, so 500 plus the 300, and that means I can grab one Jester from the board. That Jester can be placed here in my theater. Now on all of my cards that I have here, and it's every single profession card, you're going to see you'll gain two points for every jester that you have there because people love jesters, apparently. <laughs> uh, so that's going to give us an auto two points whenever we complete any of these works and bring a physicist, choreographer, or poet into our principality. After we have chosen something in the auction, the AI will choose something. They'll always choose the farthest left item that we have not chosen. So normally that would have been this uh, jester we would have had them pay these 700 that they bid for it. But I actually grabbed that, so then they're gonna to go to the next one. The next one is one of those recruiting cards, but we don't know how much they're gonna bid, so we're just gonna roll a D6, whatever that amount is, that's how many hundreds of florins they're gonna pay. We want this to be as high as possible, it's a three. So they'll play 300 florin, eh, could have been better. So we'll give them 200 back. They still have 1200 florin. Why that's important? You can spend prestige and the AI will to turn it into Florent. So if we can get them to spend all of their Florent, they'll start spending precious points to pay for things. We, of course, can do the same thing, though. However, they have a better conversion, and you'll see that as we play. So they're going to grab one of these recruiting cards and put it in their tableau. The AI player would normally place this right here to denote that's the next card after these three that they're going to complete. But just for recording purposes, because I don't have a ton of room, <laughs> I'm just gonna slide it underneath here like so. We've now completed the auction step. Let's move to the action step. So we can take two actions. Our actions are we can complete a work that's in our hand. We'd calculate what our score would be on that and I'll show you how that works in a bit. We can build a building. It costs 700 florin, but we could put one of these buildings into our principality and score three prestige. For us, we can only build one of each type of building. So if I build this uh, theater here, once I build one of those, I cannot build another one into my principality. All the buildings cost the same amount. So even if it's a small one or a really large one, it's gonna cost us 700. If we have builders, that can be reduced. We can only once 
per action round. Draw five of these by paying 300 bucks, uh, Florin. Draw five of these and keep one in our hand. We can also, and this is only one action per round, go ahead and build one of these freedoms. That also costs 300 bucks. Finally, we can acquire a bonus card. We can draw five of those, cost 300 uh, Florin, and keep one, put the others at the bottom of the deck. So the first thing I think we are going to do, we're going to spend 500, we'll get 200 back, because we are going to build this Compass Freedom uh, tile. We'll place that tile here onto our player board to denote that we have that now as one of our freedoms, and we can score that whenever we complete a works card. Speaking of which, for our second action, we're going to complete a work that's in our hand. We have our poet here. Now, this is going to calculate how we score this card. If we had a lake in our principality, we'd score it, we'd gain three points from this. We don't. Or I should say the value of the works. It's different than points, so think of it as the value of the works. Our value of the works right now is zero for that. We do have three for this one. I do not have this building in my uh, principality, so we're only at three. I do have a jester, that's five. And then for any type of these cards in our hand or out in the play area, we add an additional point. So three, four, five, six, and then I have two more, seven, eight. Ooh, just barely enough. We have eight though, that should work. I will now place this above my player area and I'll place my pawn at the eight spot. That's greater than the seven, greater or equal, so we're okay doing that. We now have a choice. We can either gain 800 florin, we can gain, uh, for every 200 florin we would gain, we can give that up for one point of prestige. So I can go all the way up to four prestige right now and gain at no florin. Or we can do a combo of both things. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to score two prestige, so that's 400 of my florin that I've given up. But then, for the other four, I will go ahead and receive 400 florin. That means I'm at 2,800 florin. Our pawn will stay here until the end of the round because then we'll compare to anyone else that completed a works this round. Whoever had the highest valued works will score three prestige points. It's now the Anima's turn. We will draw the top card. And now we ignore this section. We look at this action section. And since this is the first action, this is the one they're going to do. They'll always try and do the left one if possible, followed by the right one. The AI, or the Wolfgang player is what it's called in this, <laughs> will take the top card of the profession deck, paying the 300 florin, just like we would, and add it face down to the right of the uh, profession cards and recruiting cards that they have. Then each dummy player will also take the top card of the profession deck and place it face down in their column as well. So this means we're going to take three cards from this profession deck. So yeah, this profession deck only has nine cards in it. We're going to remove three of them with this action right here. One is going to go to the AI and the other two are going to go to the dummy player. But he does have to spend 300 to do this, which I am a-okay with. The two dummy players now have four cards in each of their stacks, and then our AI player has three plus the two additional underneath it. Once again, just doing that for ease of recording. Really, I should have those all out in a straight line. That was the first action by Wolfgang, our AI player. We'll flip our second one, and we can see down here he's going to build a building. Now he's going to have to pay 700 florin to do that. He only has 200 florin remaining. To determine which building he will build, we'll flip the leftmost profession card and we'll see the type of building that is here, and that's the one we're going to build, flipping this back over. The AI player has no restriction on building these building tiles. They can build multiples of the same type. It's not a problem. Because he is building a building, he scores three prestige, and he's going to jump in front of us. We have quite a few rules on how we can place tiles in our principality. The AI does it. We're just going to place it here, and we can always move it around. The only thing we can't do is cover up another building, because this is considered a building that's on the board, or only have it partially on the board itself. Just have to make sure he has enough room, which he certainly does. We've now both completed our actions, and the first round is done. We can see here we built a works, he did not. So that means we auto get the three uh, prestige points for having the most valued works this round. We'll remove this. We'll move this up to a round two. And our first player marker will move over to Wolfgang. Okay, let's start our next round. We'll start with that auction phase. We'll start by flipping our next AI card. And we can see here it'll be another 6 plus 1d6 for the Jesters. For the recruiting cards, it's just a 1d6. For a builder, it's 3 plus a d6. And for the prestige and for any of the landscape tiles, it's only a 1d6. So I think I'm going to start again with the Jester. 
because I'm likely not going to do that one. Uh, so let's just see what he gets. We'll roll our die and we get a three. So that means it would be 900 florin for him. I'd have to pay a thousand. Definitely not doing that. So I'm passing. Now that's the farthest left one. That means he's likely going to buy that one. Actually, he will. <laughs> he will buy that one. So I'm going to just remember that it's 900 for him so that when it gets to his turn, he'll buy that for 900, but then he gains a jester. Let's try the builder next. We need to roll a d6 adding three to it based upon this card. Wolfgang will roll a one, so that's only 400 florin. I don't think it's worth it. I'm not going to do it. For our third one, let's try a prestige card. Now, this one is only a 1d6, so that means if he rolls a one or a two, I have to take that one. If he does not roll a one or a two, then my plan is I'll come to the forest and I only have to pay 200 florin for it and I get it no matter what. We'll give our die a roll and we rolled a six. That'd be 600 florin. We'd have to pay 700. Ooh, definitely not doing that. Now you might be asking, why is it that this final one, I can automatically claim it for only 200 florin? Seems super powerful, right? Well, if you were playing this game with players, the last person that gets to put out a bid, no one else can bid because you can only get one item at a time. So that means they could guarantee one of the items for 200 florin. However, all those ones that I had already bid on, so to speak, you can't get those ones for the 200 florin. So that's why I went on a couple of the other ones that I wasn't planning on, hoping this is the only scary one because if I rolled a one or a two, I'd have to buy this, which they're still good. It's just I was really looking for that forest. So I spent 200 florin. That means I still have 2,600 florin remaining. And we'll place one of these forests into our principality. Landscapes, you can place anywhere on the board so long as it's not covering another tile or a building or that it's going off of the edge of your hex area. Any of your landscape tiles can also be adjacent to anything that you want. They can be adjacent to other uh, different landscapes, to buildings, it doesn't matter. With buildings, it's a little bit different. Buildings cannot be adjacent to other buildings unless you have a total of three builders. Uh, actually, it's only two builders. When you have your second builder, then you're able to put buildings next to each other. You can also score three prestige for every landscape that you have that's of the same type. So right now, I have one forest. Doesn't score me anything. If I buy another forest, I'll immediately gain three prestige. So you can gain prestige by having the same type of uh, landscape tiles. But then it means it's harder to complete these works and get more points for them. So that's a give or take. Wolfgang now will buy this jester and it's going to cost him 900 florin, but he only has 200 and then he's empty. So this is how he's going to get enough money to be able to buy that jester. Wolfgang needs 700 more florin. In order to get that, he can move his prestige down, gaining florin for the difference. It's 200 per step he takes down. So that's 200, that's 400, that's 600, and yes, he can even go negative. And I like to put him here upside down for 800. Now he only had to pay 700, so I will give him 100 florin in exchange, which he'll use to buy for future rounds. Uh, but now he can claim this jester. For us, we can always spend prestige as well for Florin, but it's only 100 per one prestige point. So it's a little better for him for his conversion, not as good for us. He will now place his jester right here. Okay, that completes the auction step. We're going to go to the action step, and Wolfgang will go first. Wolfgang's first action will be collecting yet another one of those profession cards. That will cost 300 florin. He only has 100, so he's going to lose another uh, one prestige point to get the other 200. This means he'll lose yet another point, putting him here, but then he'll get another prestige or a, a profession card, and so will the two dummies. There's only a couple cards left. His second card to play will then be to buy one of the freedoms. That will cost him 300 florin. He only has, well, he has zero. So he's going to have to go back by two more points, gaining 400 florin, paying three for that, and he gets 100 in exchange. We'll flip his leftmost profession card, and we can see he wants the scroll one or the paper one. So we'll flip this back over. He'll grab that freedom, and I should mention, if ever any of these stacks are empty, you don't get any more. So if they're gone, they're gone. He has now placed his freedom onto his player board. Now we can see he did not uh, complete one of his profession cards, so as long as I do that this turn, I'll gain a bonus three points. For our first action, we are most certainly going to build. 
We're going to build, a, let's do this library because it looks cool. That costs 700, so that's our 700 here. We still have 1900 Florin remaining. With this library, we can't place it here because it is orthogonally adjacent to this building. We could place it here, but that puts a lot of empty space. So I think what I might actually do is this. That does leave this one space here, but I still think that's pretty good. We've got lots of open space for other buildings or landscapes. That will also score us three points. One, two, three, we're at eight. Now let's see if we can build one of these works and get 10 or more points with that works. I think this physicist is really gonna like us. We've got three here for our force, uh, another three, six for the compass. We've got four here for 10 for our li uh, laboratory. So that's 10. We've got a jester for 12. We got 13, 14, 15. So that's a total of 15 for the score of this works. Since our works value is 15, we're going to use two, four, six, eight of that to be a prestige points. So we're at 12 and then we'll gain 700 florin for the difference. And then at the end of the round, one, two, three, because we're the only one that completed a works this round, we're all the way up to 15 points to minus two. <laughs> right now it's going well. Will it continue that way? We'll see. We're now in round three. Our first player marker will move back over to us. We'll flip over the Anima card. And okay, let's see. I kind of am looking for a prestige card because those are game end scoring. And if I can know about it early enough, hopefully I can achieve it. Let's start though by trying to do a recruitment card. We're gonna add one to this die roll. One plus three, that's 400. Oh, that's somewhat tempting. I'm gonna run out of those uh, profession cards very quickly because the AIs are gonna snag them. The way that I can continue to build some is actually through the recruiting cards. I'm not gonna go for it, I'm gonna pass. But that means the AI is gonna to have to pay that 400 to claim that one. Let's do the Jester next, as that's a five plus a D6. I'll just roll it here. Oh, that's only a six. Oh, do I want that? 600, 600 Florin, I could get another Jester. That's two more points for any of the types. Oh, that's kind of, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I was gonna get a Prestige, maybe I'll have to get that next time. I'm gonna pay a 600 Florin. That means I still have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I still have 2,000 Florin, but I will get a second Jester that's gonna go into my theater. And now I'm gonna get four points for every one of my works that's completed. Then of course, Wolfgang is gonna buy this. He's gonna buy this at one, two, three, 400. He only has 100, so he's gonna have to lose some points for that. He'll have to lose two points for 400. He'll still have the 100 remaining. However, now he has two of these recruitment cards and you're gonna see why that's not good. We are first for the actions this time. I'm going to pay 700 Florin. That means I only have 1300 left, but I'm gonna get the Opera House. That will immediately give me three points. I'm up to 18 prestige points. Once again, this opera cannot be orthogonally adjacent. Oh, do I, man, these buildings do not fit great. You know, I'm just gonna do it that way, I think. <laughs> I'm then going to complete my third work, the choreographer. Now I have no cards in my hand though. This will be three, because I have the force, three because I have the compass, that's six, four because I have the opera, that's 10. I now have two of these gestures. It's 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, that's 1700 uh, value for my works. With that value of 17, I'll go two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, and then gain my 700 Florin back that I just used to build a building. It's now Wolfgang's turn, and you're gonna see he'll catch up very soon. Uh, we have here, he's gonna buy more professional cards. It's gonna cost 300 Florin. He, of course, only has one. That means he'll use his one, giving up one of his prestige for 200 florin to pay for it. But that means of these three, all of them are gonna be gone. One more is gonna be to him and the other two are going to be for the other dummy players. There are now no more here and that's why I need the recruiting card so bad because there's no other way for me to get cards now. After completing that first action, let's see what the second one is. He's finally going to complete a works. Yeah, he waits till rounds three or four in general to complete a work. He is going to flip over his leftmost profession card. We have our goldsmith. We've seen this for a bit. Now, how he's going to calculate his score. First, he's going to calculate it by looking at the minimum work value for the current round, which is 12. So he's starting at 12. Then for every jester, he's going to add two, just like we do. So he has one jester. That's 14. Then for every recruiting card, he's going to add one. 
Well, he has two recruiting cards. So he was at 14. Now two more is 15, 16. Then if he had any bonus cards, we'd flip them over and do whatever they say to give him extra points. And he does not count his profession cards or other objects. He'll then place his pawn on the fame track on the space that matches the value of his work, which of course was 1600. So he's going to be one behind me, right? Because this was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yes, I thought I snuck him out there. He will sneak in at 16. Look at that. I'm at 17. Yes. He is now going to convert this as much as possible to points. So at 16, that means he'll earn eight points. Of course, he's negative right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's at a positive three points now. If let's say he was at an odd number, then he would gain the 100 odd as Florent. Finally, the two dummies over here will also complete a work. We'll just flip them face up because those are ones that we could potentially use our recruitment cards to get into our hand and complete ourselves. At the end of the round, you can see my works was just a little bit better. So I'll score three points and that will end the round. We'll then give the first player token over to Wolfgang. Now, though, any works that's completed has to be at a value of 14 or higher. We'll flip over his Automa card and okay let's start with the bidding on the builder that's going to be two plus one d6 i really don't want a builder i want it as high as possible that's only a one that's only 300 uh, do i want a builder i don't want a builder for 300 i i think i'm going to pass on that but that means he's going to only pay 300 bucks for that i think what i'm going to try now is one of the prestige cards let's see what he bids a two i'll take that for 300 I want a prestige card. Now how this works is we're going to draw five of them and we get to keep one. Our options are if we have all three freedoms at the end of the game, we score eight points. Or if we have the most parks, I'm not going to have the most parks, the most jesters. Oh, that'd be six points. I have two. So that's a potential. The most landscapes. He has none, but I only have one. The most buildings. I have three and he has two. Yeah, I kind of think let's do for all freedoms. Let's score eight points for that, shall we? Wolfgang will then grab a builder. It costs 300, so he's going to lose two points for 400 florin. He's going to get 100 florin back from here, and we'll grab this builder. The first builder causes all buildings in the future to only cost 300 instead of 700. The second builder first gets you three prestige, and then second of all, buildings can be adjacent. And then the third builder makes all building uh, costs zero, which is insane and gives you another three prestige. We'll put this here. He is first player, so let's draw his two cards. We'll grab his card, flip it over, and we can see here he try and get a profession card, but those are empty. So now he's simply gonna build. He will have to only spend 300 for that. 100 from here, he'll lose one point. We'll look at the leftmost face down card, flip it over, and he's gonna build this building. He has to lose one prestige point for the other 200 but he'll grab this which also will push him up by three because you gain three prestige every time you build a building he'll place this university right here remember doesn't really matter we can move it around to make it fit we'll discard this card flipping over the next one and he is going to complete a work we'll grab that next leftmost card flip it over its value is 14 now to start with because that's the minimum work that can be completed 14 he has one of these 15 16 he has two of those recruitment cards, 17, 18. 18 divided by two is nine, so he will move up to 12. Not only that, he's the only one that completed a work. One, two, three, he's already starting to catch up. Like I told you, he comes real quick. <laughs> Unlike a lot of games where the AI actually jumps out ahead, this one has it be where you jump out ahead, you feel safe, and then he starts crawling back real fast. Okay, round five will be start player. We're already over halfway done with this game. It goes quick. We need a recruiting card. And what is he going to roll? A four plus one D6. I think we got to do it. We got to do it. If that's a six, I might have to try something else, but I've got to try something. Oh, wait, before I do that, I get to reveal another two professions from the two dummy players over here because those could be very beneficial to us. As you can see, these four are now available to us to recruit as well as the two from Wolfgang himself. Four plus two, that's six. I'm definitely spending 700. 
I've got a thousand here. I'm going to get 300 back. I'm not going to have a lot of florin left, but it's going to be worth it. 300 uh, florin from that. This means I have exactly a thousand remaining. I'm going to snag this card so that I can put out more works. Based on this card, Wolfgang will grab one of the three landscape tiles. We have to roll this die up. He's going to bid 400, so he's going to lose two points for that. To determine which one he's going to grab, we're going to look at his next profession card. We'll sneak him back to 13 prestige. And we'll simply reveal this next one. It looks like it is a fountain. What am I saying? There's no fountain in this game. It's a park. <laughs> there we go. Remember, he does not score any points for this park, but if he puts out another park, he'll immediately gain three prestige. I'm first in the action phase this round, and it's not looking pretty. I'm going to use 600 florin for two actions. One action is to grab this freedom, because remember, I want one of each type for eight points. So then that means next round, I just need to grab one of these or the final round, and then I, that should score me eight points. The recruiting card in my hand lets me replace it with any of the profession cards that are out on the table. However, none of them that are on the table are going to score me more than 15 uh, work points, so I wouldn't be able to play them anyways. So instead, my other 300 florin, which by the way, I only have 400 florin left after this, <laughs> I am going for a bonus card. We'll do the same thing here, drawing five, picking one and putting the other four at the bottom of the deck. This bonus card would give us bonus points for each small building and landscape. That's not worth it. Each builder, I don't even have any builders. Each refresh profession and recruiting card in your hand. No, I have one, that's only one. Each building, okay, that would be three. Yes, that one's looking the best. Each prestige card you have and each freedom in your principality. So I have one prestige card and I have two. That's a three. And if I'm thinking of buying another one, that could be four. Ooh, I think I'm going to do uh, this one. I'm going to keep this one, putting the, all, all the others at the bottom of the deck. Wolfgang will flip over his card and he's going to do a building. It's only going to cost him 300. He has no florin. So he will lose two uh, prestige points and get 100 back. The building will be this one. That is this large one right here, gaining three prestige points. He'll place that right here because he's the boss, and I'm bummed that I can't do cool things like that. His second card for his second action will then be, so you always do the left first, completing a works. He'll flip over his next card. It doesn't matter what it is. Just so I don't forget, the two dummy players will flip over the composer and the watchmaker. This work will be valued at 15 plus 2, which is 17, plus there are two more recruitment cards, 18, 19. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and he will get one florin back. He now has two florin, and not only that, at the end of the round, he'll score three points, 1, 2, 3, because he's the only one that completed a works. And now he's ahead of me. That will end round 5. We're going to move to round 6. I really need to find a way to make a works. Otherwise, I am done for. Oh, and don't forget, he will become first player. I only have 400 florin remaining. This is going to be fun. Okay, I know that I want a recruitment card. It's 2 plus 1d6. Let's just do it. We'll roll up our die. He gets me a 2, so that's 400. So I'm going to pay 500 florin. Spending all 400 my florin and one prestige to pay for that. Is that worth it? I have no idea, but we'll see how it goes. This should mean the last two rounds, as long as I can get enough points with them, I can complete two works. That's the plan. Now Wolfgang will try and grab a prestige card. It's three plus whatever we roll here. That's a four, so that's going to cost them 700 total florin. He has 200 here, 400, 600, 800 and then he'll get that 100 back, and we're completely tied. Wow, this is a tight game. Now, though, I'm going to draw five of these prestige cards, and I'm going to try and pick the one that I wish I could say is the worst, but no, it's the best for him from what he has on his board, and then if he can get points from it, he will. Looking at these prestige cards, this first one would earn him six points if he had the most lakes. Currently, he has zero, but so do we, so that'd be worth three. So I'll put that here. This one for each one builder, a jester, and two landscape, that's zero. He doesn't have two landscapes. For the fewest empty spaces, I'm going to have to look at that off camera to see. The most works, he's at three, I'm at three, uh, four if tied. So actually, this one is the best right now, I think. 
the most forests? No, we have the most forests. Well, guess what? Right now, he has the fewest empty spaces, so this will score him eight points at the end of the game. This might be my killer. He'll then flip his Anima card, and he's going to build. Uh, we'll look at the next prestige card, which is not the next card. The next card is a recruitment card. He's going to build that building again, and that's going to cost him 300 florin. And I hate to say it, but I think with that purchase, he's guaranteed to beat me on the spaces filled on his board. Not to mention that's a building, one, two, three. He's going to gain three prestige for that. For right now, he'll simply place that right here. You know for his next card, he's likely going to, yep, complete a works. This time, it is a recruitment card, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to put it out. We'll have the two dummy players reveal new cards. So our dummy player will reveal the dramatist. And our other one will reveal the cartographer. The base value of that works is 16. He has a jester, so that's 18. And then he has two recruitment cards, that's 20. That means he'll gain 10 points, putting him from 27 to 37. Yeah, he's going to just jump so far ahead of me right now. <laughs> The first thing I'm going to do for my turn is lose three more points, and I only gain 100 florin for each point that I lose. That will allow me, though, to pay that 300 florin for this freedom, and that's my third and final freedom. That will score me, is it six points? No, it earns me eight points for those at the end of the game. It basically nullifies his prestige card. Now, this is not an action, but I'm going to use my recruiting card. It can be ex exchanged for any profession card on the table. Now, this card will count as a profession card for the purposes of any other card. I am doing this conversion with or trade with the dummy player, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to grab his composer. Okay, so I'm giving him that recruiting card. It's out of my hand. This is now in my hand, and I'm going to complete this work. I don't have a lake, uh, but I do have this uh, freedom, so that's three. I do have this building, so that's seven. I have two jesters, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 for the cards in my hand and on the table. And then I'm going to play this bonus. And that's going to give me a, a point for each prestige card, which I have one, so that's 17, and each freedom, 18, 19, 20. I have three freedoms, 20 points. With my score of 20, I'll go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and I'll gain two florin, 200 florin for the last two. That puts me at the 20 points. You guys, I don't think there's a chance here. At the end of the round, we're both tied. One, two, three. One, two, three. We both go to three. We both earn the three points since we were equal. Last round, I become first player, final auction. We'll flip over our auction card. And what I'm looking for is that park. So I'm actually going to do one of these ones first adding four for the recruitment card. We'll just pick up a die and give it a roll. Four plus four is eight, so that's 800 florin. Then we'll do the prestige card. Three plus two is 500, I'm not gonna do that. The jester, two plus two is 200. And then I'm gonna go here because it's the final one. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna buy a park. That cost me 200 florin. That's exactly what I have. And we'll place this out on our board. We'll place this right here. The one good thing is Wolfgang did decide to buy the last recruiting card for 800. And he has no floor. Two, four, six, eight. So he's getting a little closer. However, that's just going to help his work score. This is the only action we're going to take. We're going to grab that botanist. That's because with the botanist, we can play it as it works. We now have a park. So that's three. We do have this freedom. That's six. We do have the laboratory. That's 10. Then we have two more here. That's 14. Then we have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we're going to be able to score 19. However, we're giving the AI yet another one of these recruiting cards. That's only going to help him. <laughs> With 19 for our works, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I'll get 100 florin, but that's not really going to be useful. We have two Anima cards left for Wolfgang. First thing he's going to do is he's going to get a bonus card. That'll cost him 300 florin. He'll go. He'll have to go back by two, get a 100. And then let's just look at these. He's going to look at the top five, pick the best one. For each lake, he has no lakes. So he's not going to take that one. For each jester, he does have one jester, so that's two points. Number three, for each prestige card, that is also by two, so either one of those. That's three. Number four, for each large building, he's got one, two, three 
Oh, for e that's that's six extra points. He's gonna take that one likely. And the final one for each landscape. No, he's not gonna take that one. So he's gonna take this one. It's gonna add six to the value of his next completed work. If he didn't complete a work here, we could win the game, but I think he's going to. Yes, he definitely is. Base value of that work is 17, plus a jester is 19, plus he has 20, 21. I think he has one, no, two more, 22, 23. And he's going to get six points with that. That's 29. Oh my gosh, 29. This just means he's going to kill me. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. He'd get another 100 florin, and he'd go 1, 2. He, of course, received the three extra points because he had the much stronger work at the end of the game. And then, of course, he'd score eight points, so he'd go to from 51 to 59. That's from his prestige card, and we'd go from 43 to 51, which means he ends up beating me by eight points. So actually not terrible, but man... Uh, the trying to get those works done at the end is brutal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully that helps you see how this game works solo when you're playing it competitively. The auction, of course, is a lot more active than you just rolling a die. Uh, but the basics, the basis of how you score is pretty much identical. I don't think there's anything different for how you score. There isn't. So when you're playing competitive, you should be able to play your own board now. Just know that the auction will be a little bit different for competitive games. There you go. I hope you all enjoyed this. Hopefully this helps you if you're interested in this game or if you have it and you want to try the solo version. And if you'd like to see what's coming next on the channel from either Baird or myself, then I need you to meet me at the table.